Friday practice for the second round of the World Championship kicked off with Ferrari setting the early pace after bringing large updates to their cars. However, equally, every other team was bringing parts to continue their development, and qualifying will certainly still be a close affair. Mercedes appear to be quite poor on low fuel runs, but surprisingly pick up pace in spades during long runs, which makes them a large unknown factor for the race. The same could be said for the American faction of Haas, who have been buoyed by the performance of their new Chevrolet engine, and hope to start to challenge the likes of Jaguar, McLaren, and Audi if they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe strategy wise. Tires will be crucial this weekend as teams seem to be very on edge as simulations suggest that two-stop is possible, but only marginally, and that a more aggressive three-stop avoiding the hard tire may be the way to go. Let's take a look at the starting grid for the 2020 British Grand Prix, and it's an all-Ferrari affair at the front with Antonio Giovinazzi taking pole position ahead of his teammate Sebastian Vettel, and by nearly three-tenths of a second, the Italian doing very well in qualifying. Carlos Sainz did manage to set an identical time to Vettel, but unfortunately could only manage third position, but is going to start ahead of Daniel Ricciardo in the McLaren who's in fourth. Stoffel Van Dorn for the Jaguar team will start from fifth position alongside Roman Grosjean, putting his Haas on the third row of the grid. Both Haases making it into the top ten. Pierre Gasly for the Red Bull team will start from seventh. Much better qualifying this week compared to last week. Then comes Erev in the other Jaguar, starting from eighth and fourth row of the grid. Nico Hulkenberg will start from ninth, but ahead of the Audi of Sergio Perez, whose qualifying woes continue. In 11th position, we've got Kevin Magnussen in the other McLaren quite a ways off his teammate Daniel Ricciardo. Then comes Mick Schumacher for the Monster Rehab team on the sixth row of the grid. Then comes Max Verstappen for Mercedes alongside his teammate Pascal Wehrlein. And they'll be starting from the seventh row of the grid, 13th and 14th place respectively. Not happy about that. Sophia Flourish for Monster Rehab will start from 15th position. The top 15 all within one second of each other. Then comes Nico Kari, the other Red Bull driver in 16th position. Lando Norris for Williams will start from 17th alongside Leclerc in the Alfa Romeo in 18th position. His qualifying continues to do better than last season, certainly. Then comes Sergio Camara in the Williams in 19th position alongside Antonio Fuoco in the other Alfa Romeo. And at the rear, it's all Renaults with Esteban Ocon getting the better of Valtteri Bottas. What's going on guys, Arava here, and welcome back to my F1 My Driver career mode, episode number two today for season six at the British Grand Prix. And yep, My Driver is here on a Monday. My Driver is now running every single Friday and Monday at around 7 p.m. UK time. I did actually put this uh, information in the comments below of the last episode. You may have not seen it, but there you go now, you know, and uh, hopefully you guys can let other people know who are going to inevitably be confused in the coming weeks about the schedule, but it's every Monday and Friday. No other days, every Monday and Friday. Let me say that again, Monday and Friday, 7 p.m. usually around the UK time. But anyway, if you did miss the first episode of the Bahrain Grand Prix, be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. There is the championship standings in the bottom right, and now we saw our eyes here on our home Grand Prix, not only for us, but also our Team Jaguar, of course. We did a little bit less uh, performance in qualifying uh, compared to Bahrain for myself and Stoffel, but we had the likes of the Ferrari cars who have locked out the front row here today with a really big boost in performance of aerodynamics uh, coming to this Grand Prix, and the same can maybe be said of Pierre Gasly, who's done amazingly to get ahead of us in seventh place there obviously our old rival and nemesis from our red bull days in season four so it's gonna be a very very interesting grand prix with so many people bringing upgrades to this one so let's get going then let's not waste any time let's go to five red lights to the british grand prix round number two of my driver season six five red lights are out and we're underway and it's a good start for us compared to beer gasly and roman grosjean who bogs down in the hash chevrolet car up ahead it looks like going into turn one i think the, the audi car of science is battling on the Ferrari cars, we have to snag behind Pierre Gasly as we get a little bit unsettled on the apex. Can we try and do something? But it looks like up ahead, it is Antonio Giovinazzi leading the way from Carlos Sainz to Sebastian Vettel, then followed closely by Daniel Ricciardo, Van Dorn, Grosjean, and then here we go, round the outside of Pierre Gasly, side by side, so, so close there, but we just make it round the outside, and now we can try and slipstream, but there you go, confirmation there, the Ferrari leading one in one and three there, with a bit of a Audi sandwich in the middle of them, so as we go into Lefield, trying to chase after now, Rome 
Ruben Grosjean in the Haas Chevrolet car who didn't get the best start there and couldn't get the jump on our teammate Stoffel Van Dorn and it looks like we're already getting away from Pierre Gasly so good signs there so it looks like potentially the Red Bull car was only great in qualifying and then up ahead though look at that Grosjean straight on the back of Van Dorn using the Chevrolet engine to good use there through Cops corner the old turn one and uh, Gro Grosjean has passed he's overtaken Van Dorn and now we find ourselves on the back of our teammate there so Van Dorn struggling right now at the moment in half this first lap and Grosjean going really well in the Haas car. I've seen that boost of performance straight away that he talked about at the end of the last episode. They mentioned that they were hoping for more from a solid double points being position. And it looks like, look at that, Carlos Sainz has made a move for the lead of the Grand Prix up ahead. We couldn't quite see that. It's gone off our camera, but it looks like Sainz has taken the lead from Antonio Giovinazzi. Then it'll be Vettel in third place. And now we're going to make a move down the inside of Stoffel Van Dorn, catch him napping a little bit into the chicane. And we're going to join up in P6 behind Grosjean and Ricardo to finish out the top six. And so Sainz sets the fast half of the Grand Prix. We're going to take a look at his replay actually of how he got into first place. So from five red lights, first he has to get into P2 and overtake Sebastian Vettel. So doesn't get much wheel spin there off the start. Vettel definitely does as he bogs down quite visually. And into turn one, Sainz around the outside. A little bit of contact's made there. Uh, you can see uh, Vettel's uh, front wing just in the corner of the screen momentarily. But that's fine from Sainz. And then he's going to chase after P1 here down the back straight to Towards Stowe. Interestingly enough, Vettel's actually still hanging on to the slipstream there, but Sainz pretty damn easy. Maybe using a bit of rich mix as well, but we know how good the slipstream is on this game. So Sainz gets down into P1, and Antonio has to settle down for P2 in this Grand Prix. So that's the replay of how the race leader uh, got into that position. And now we move on to the live action of Pierre Gasly. This is going down the inside of Sopha Van Dorn. Unfortunately, uh, quite poor camera work from the game here, but Gasly's trying to go around the outside of Van Dorn. You can just see on the right hand side of your screen, and he's going to get squeezed out. So Van Dorn do, uh, successfully defends from Pierre Gasly for P7, that will be. Meanwhile, up ahead, we're in P6, and we're looking at maybe three wide into Cops with the two Ferrari cars going side by side. Vettel has gone down the inside of Giovinazzi. They go side by side into Magnus and Beckett, and Vettel has got second place in the Grand Prix. Giovinazzi down to third. Ricardo tried to have a look, but he stayed in P4, and Grosjean and myself staying in P5 and P6, respectively. But now, could we get some slipstream and crucial toe down this back straight to overtake Grosjean? Looks like Ricardo will do on Antonio Giovinazzi. So here goes Ricardo in the McLaren Honda down the inside. He's made the move on Giovinazzi and as he does that I go round the outside of Grosjean finding the grip and momentum in fourth gear there down the inside the chicane finally. Diving down the inside. Just about missed the apex there but don't want to hit Giovinazzi obviously and now we're up into P5. So lots of changes. The top six changing so much already with only three laps gone as Vettel sets the pass up for the Grand Prix there. But now we move back on a replay now of uh, this is a fight between Gassi and Van Dorn still. This, so this was just previously on that on that same lap. As we were looking at Vettel and Giovinazzi battling, you could see that Hulkenberg now has gone round the outside of Van Dorn. Gasly's overtaken Van Dorn down the inside of Cops. Then Hulkenberg goes down the inside of Van Dorn into Maggot. So that's absolutely awesome stuff there with Hulkenberg making a bold, bold move into Maggot and Beckett. And Van Dorn has now lost two positions, maybe three, as now Mick Schumacher in the Monster Rehab car goes three wide with Sergio Perez. Van Dorn has to go round the outside. Looks like he's going to lose two more positions. Three more. Van Dorn is absolutely bottling this race at the moment. That's a bit of a lock up there from on the cars up ahead. And it's going to be one of the Mercedes cars overtaking Van Dorn there. So Van Dorn down five positions in the span of half a lap. That is insane, insanely poor performance there from our teammates off of Van Dorn. Thankfully for us though, we're in stark contrast making an overtake on our very familiar rival, I guess you could say, Antonio Giovinazzi. We've had many, many battles with him over the course of my driver. Very familiar with him and we've gone round the outside of him into Luffield and we're up into P4 now and now can we try and maybe look at the back of Daniel Ricciardo. It's actually going to be Sebastian Vettel though having a look at Carlos Sainz. Here he goes with Slipstream down the inside of Cobbs. It's going to be side by side. So, so close and this is for the race lead. Absolutely fantastic and Vettel's done it. He's up into P1 so a Ferrari leads the British Grand Prix once again from the Audi and Nico Hülkenberg is out of this Grand Prix. Oh look at that in the background. We could see it. The engine failure from Nico Hülkenberg. His Chevrolet engine's gone up in flames and smoke and Hulkamo parks it in the middle of the Magnus and Beckett section safely away from everyone so there's no safety car or virtual safety car thankfully for us so we can continue this very intense battle and look at this the top four all four different constructors Ferrari, Audi, McLaren and Jaguar and behind me we've also got the Haas so actually the top five are all five different constructors 
and we're all separated by at least just a second only. Absolutely fantastic to see. And so we're on to lap four now and there's already been so much action in this Grand Prix and there's more to come as we find ourselves right up the gearbox of Daniel Ricciardo trying to shape him up. We go a little bit wide here to get a tighter exit off Liffield and we're going to get the traction in fourth and then fifth gear. And you can see we go side by side through the next straight. We're catching both catching signs. Ricciardo uses the Honda engine though to good use down the inside. Powell's past me and maybe Sainz as well side by side. Oh, a bit of contact made there on the right hand side of Sainz's side pod. We're going to go around the outside as Sainz has now been caught kind of napping on the exit down the inside of Maggots into Beckett's we go trying to get maybe Ricardo as well. We're going to have to maybe wait to the next straight down the back straight towards Stowe but we've both overtaken Sainz so Sainz uh, getting really really caught out there so a double loss of positions and now we're going to try and overtake Ricardo now. Now finally up into P2 down the inside of Stowe and so now as things are coming down we're looking a little bit down the racing order. You can see Max Verstappen looks like he's just made a move actually down the inside of Mick Schumacher there from his entry into Stowe. Looked like he made the move on Mick just then and there and got up the, the order up into around I would say I think that's P8. I think it's quite hard to count all the cars there from the distance but uh, yeah things calm down now. We've got a bit of clean air to try and chase Vettel. We're going to have a look at if, uh, any other battles that are happening on track as uh, Verstappen goes into turn one of lap five still being chased hard by Mick Schumacher. Behind them is Sergio Perez and Stoffel Van Dorn and Van Dorn down even further actually and behind them a huge lock up from the other Red Bull car of Nico Carey obviously a rookie in Formula 1 so uh, you know we're not going to punish him too much for making a mistake there but it does lock up quite badly enough to allow uh, uh, Pascal Verline to overtake him there so poor mistake from Carey he's going to have to try and re-overtake uh, Verline if he can the two Red Bull cars really performing quite well actually compared to how they did in Bahrain uh, so maybe a, a performance gain from them obviously they are running the Honda engines uh, this year so they're not too bad in the straight line anymore this year so it's just the aerodynamics that they're lacking a little bit since Adrian Newey has kind of stopped involvement here with the team as of late uh, but yeah yeah big boost performance for them so far but now we move back onto the kind of top flight there and then we can see Roman Grosjean right up behind Carlos Scientists and up ahead you can see Ricardo is still hanging on to the back of myself as we go onto the back straight towards Stowe once again on lap five this time and Ricardo is going to get some slipstream DRS and he's going to try and make the move we defend to the inside of Stowe and Ricardo tries to make a move around the outside it's going to be a failed attempt for him and we do quite well to defend and we're actually going to come in very very early now compared to maybe Ricardo we dive into the pits and it looks like behind us we've got uh, Roman Grosjean also following us in so we defended well there and now we're going to swoop in now for a set of medium tyres I think we're going to go medium tyres we're going to be avoiding the hard tyres I think this entire Grand Prix because from practice we saw the hard tyres really didn't perform that well in practice so I think we're going mediums and then probably a two sets of softs to the end of the Grand Prix sounds pretty aggressive but I think it's going to be the right way to go because I think we're going to need that speed. But in the pit stops, unfortunately, looks like, yep, we have been jumped by Romain Grosjean and the Haas team. So, ah, oh, that's frustrating. Just like last season a few times, Jackie, we've just not done a great job on the pit stops there. We've been jumped by one, uh, one car there. Thankfully, not anymore, as we're still ahead of Giovinazzi and uh, one of the Audi cars of, I think that will be Sergio Perez. Uh, so we, now we need to try and re-overtake Roman Grosjean if we can, unfortunately, here. And speaking of Sergio Perez briefly there, we're going to cut onto a replay now of a little incident with him. This is how actually he found himself behind Mick Schumacher and Max Verstappen. He locks up horribly into that left-hander and loses two positions very swiftly as Verstappen and Mick wait, waste no time at all getting down his inside there. And then we're going to look at a replay, finally, of Nico Hulkenberg's engine failure and just really see where it actually happened. It was on the exit of Cops, it looks like. He's on the back of gas so real unfortunate there that he was actually performing very very well looking to maybe join Grosjean his teammate in the top fight but then he parks up there as we saw previously there so now we cut back to the live action this is on the, the same lap that we, we've had an out lap obviously but that, this is Daniel Ricciardo now defending from Carlos Sainz and this is for the lead of the Grand Prix meanwhile Mick Schumacher overtakes re-overtakes uh, Max Verstappen obviously as Verstappen was previously ahead of Verstappen so the, uh, the younger team at the moment kind of uh, unsettling the older team there as now, now Verstappen dives in the pits. Uh, Verline continues on and there is Van Dorn coming to the pits. A load of cars coming to the pits. Ricardo, Gasly, Mick Schumacher looks like one of the Alfa Romeos. There is Sebastian Vettel who's already actually pit 
for his first pit stop. He actually pit one lap earlier than I did. So I thought I pit early, but Vettel had already pit one lap earlier than me on lap four there. So he got very, very early in. And then there is uh, Grosjean, and we're chasing him down on the next lap on towards, I think this is around lap seven, I want to say, as we go into turn one. So we're in a net third position, I think this will be, and Grosjean is in a net second position. So Grosjean's effectively gained three positions there. It's not only jumped me, he's also jumped Danny Ricciardo and Sainz in that phase of the Grand Prix. So amazing performance there from him and the Haas team. But now we're going to try and put him under pressure into the chicane. Having a look down the inside, he locks up. We lock up. He goes deep. I go even deeper. And then very, very confusing uh, move here down the inside as we both really kind of just bottle it into that chicane corner. But I come out the better as uh, Grosjean really gets it poor on the exit. So we nipped it down the inside and somehow got up the order. Now into second place through turn one on lap eight. As you can see there in the top left, Vettel still leads the Grand Prix. But into the next corner, Grosjean sends it down the inside. An absolute dive bomb down the inside. And I just thankfully see it in my mirrors and give him the room there. Otherwise, that would have been some contact and that would have been a collision between myself and Grosjean. So Grosjean very, very aggressive there and just sent it very, very late into that corner in Village. And so Grosjean's back up into second place. So Grosjean's playing hardball here with me. So we're going to have to really fight for this position. We swoop around the inside, down the inside of Luffel. Now we jockey for position on the exit, just trying to get the power down in third and then fourth gear. We do get it then back up into second place. But this is a fantastic scrap between myself and Grosjean. And obviously Grosjean's maybe not used to this fight. Last year he was probably fighting for these high podium positions. Was probably back in his Lotus Renault days in uh, 2013 with Kimi Raikkonen as his teammate. So it's been a while, but Grosjean still has the race craft there. So he's going to continue to chase me down through maggots and Beckett and just keep on the back of me. Obviously he will get DRS now and the toe down the back straight towards Stowe. So I think we may have to just uh, kind of accept that he's going to overtake us here, but just try our best to maybe defend, put him off a little bit and stay behind him. But here he goes down the inside. Look at the speed he's got there down the inside of Stowe. We're going to try our best though to hang it around the outside. We will actually find the grip in fifth gear and we're going to keep it side by side actually. So we may not be giving up the position too easily. Down the inside, hit the apex, a little lock up there, but we do defend successfully. So we do actually keep the second place. I thought that would have been a hook line and sinker there for Grosjean to overtake me, but we did well in Stowe to get the grip mid corner. But now onto the following next lap, back again towards Cops. Now Grosjean has the speed. He's going to power past us down the inside. We're going to go side by side through cop, swoop around the outside. It's going to be so, so close between my front right tyre and his side pod. There you can fit a piece of paper between that little gap as now we're the ones chasing down Grosjean through Magda to Beckett's right up his gearbox. We have a little look now on the left hand. It's not going to work out. We get a lot of understeer there. Scrub off way too much speed with, uh, with the dirty air from that Haskar from the wake. So that probably wasn't the, the cleverest thing to do. Try and make the move down the inside there because now down the back straight we don't have the speed to close up into Stowe. So we have to stick behind Grosjean, recon pose ourselves basically and maybe try and make the move on the following lap there but this has been an absolute ding dong battle here between me and Grosjean absolutely awesome but all the meanwhile this just means Sebastian Vettel is having a nice time up ahead in the lead of this Grand Prix getting away from us but here we go on the following lap with DRS wide open closing up into the next left field section right up his gearbox can we try and make a similar move like we made to Ricardo earlier on the Grand Prix no it's going to be a different one because we're going to try and hang it around the outside this time doesn't work out we get understeer hit the curbing and we can see the tyres are starting to wear a little bit on the left front. So the medium tyres are actually not feeling too great, honestly. But we're going to try and send it down the inside. So, so close yet again through Cops. But this time I'm the one down the inside. So we're just basically swapping the manoeuvres we're doing lap after, uh, lap after lap. And now we're the once again ahead of Grosjean. So this is just absolutely awesome. Such a, such a fun battle with uh, Grosjean in the Haas car. And so once again, we're up into P2. And once again, Grosjean, though, is going to come back at us now with DRS on the left-hand side. Meanwhile, behind us, you can just about see uh, we've got a train between the, the Audi car, the Ferrari, and our teammate Van Dorn, I think that is. And once again, Grosjean back up into P2, but this time we get a good exit off the exit of Stowe. Very, very close off. Grosjean just about gives us the room there, but squeezes off into the apex, and Grosjean keeps P2. We send it deep, and we have to settle down for P3, unfortunately. And it's actually going to be P2, as Vettel made an early pit stop there once again. So Vettel Looking like, looking like to make the undercut work quite well there. But now we're going to look at a replay now. So this replay is just going to give us some context of what's happening behind us. So this is Sainz from Giovinazzi, then Pascal Verlein, who's doing very, very well. Again, finding himself up in the top fight where he really shouldn't be from what the Mercedes have been performing in qualifying. Then behind them is a train between Gasly, Perez, Van Dorn, Mick Schumacher and Max Verstappen. Look at that. 
five cars so, so close together. After Even after a pit stop, they're so, so close. And then behind this train is then the two McLaren cars of Kevin Magnussen and then Daniel Ricciardo. Speaking of Magnussen, we really haven't seen him at all in this season. He's been very, very quiet off the radar, really. Not performing too well compared to his Australian uh, new teammate, Ricciardo, who we're running on board with now, who is very out of sync of this Grand Prix. I think with Ricciardo, I think he is making a, one less stop than myself, Grosjean and Vettel because he's very much out of sync of this Grand Prix, but I imagine he is in the top five. And then behind him is Sofia Flourish overtaking the Alfa Romeo, and he's, uh, they're going three wide with the Renault car of Esteban Ocon. Ocon's made a move, a double overtake around the outside. Ocon's done brilliantly there. And then Sofia gets down the inside of Leclerc, who also is going to get squeezed out potentially by Lando Norris in the Williams car and set to Camara. Lock up from Sofia as Charles goes down the inside of Norris, and he's made the move. And then the two Williams cars, set to Camara and Lando Norris, go down the uh, inside, side by side through the final corner. Absolute great scrap there and behind them, Nico Carey trying to make, me make a move. And then look at that, there's the Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel who's behind all these cars. So Vettel, who's made that early pit stop I mentioned, he's already made his second pit stop in this Grand Prix. This is going to hamper him so, so much because me and Grosjean are, are now going to come into the pits pretty damn soon and Vettel is being stuck uh, and caught up in this traffic. So that's going to really be quite interesting to see. Could me and Grosjean potentially be jumping Vettel or at least getting right up to him with that traffic he's hitting. We'll have to find out now as we come into the pits now. Lap 11. Only 11 laps gone and so much action's already happened. That's crazy. Uh, so we're going to come into the pits. As I mentioned earlier with the, set, uh, with the first pit stop, we're now going to come in for a set of soft tyres. We're going to come in for another pit stop after for another set of soft tyres. So we're getting very, very aggressive. Whereas, as I mentioned, I think Ricardo is definitely going for the two stop here because he's gone to the mediums, but he's kind of very, very out of sync of this Grand Prix. He's in clean air though. So I think he's trying to go for a set of for a two-stop where he's not wearing his tires out too much, getting, getting in that clean air and just kind of doing his own race. So he's not in any kind of scraps or fights. So I think he's playing that kind of uh, more long game there as we're going very, very aggressive, very short-term gains on these fresher tires. So now we're coming out on lap 12. We're down in last place pretty much, lap 20. But you can see Vettel is not too far away from us on the mini-map there. And so now we're going to look at a replay now. This is further on away from us on the other side of the circuit. This is Pasco Verline fighting with Sainz and uh, uh, Antonio Giovinazzi. Giovinazzi goes down the inside of Carlos Sainz to overtake him. Then Verline goes side by side. So Verline has caught Sainz napping. They go side by side. Huge lock up though from Verline down to the chicane. So Sainz is going to maybe defend from him. They're going to go side by side through the entire final few corners. And Verline, I think he's going to get the move. Yes, he will. He'll squeeze out Carlos Sainz. It's a great move for Verline. And so once again, Verline voted the driver of the day at the Bahrain Grand Prix by you guys. Is once again performing very, very well and pretty much outperforming that Mercedes in the race compared to their qualifying uh, their qualifying pace. And you can see there on your screen on lap 13, we've just come out ahead of Romain Grosjean. He was literally just coming out of the pit lane. So very, very close stuff there. And we're up and ahead of Grosjean in this fight. So we've got some clean air now. And you can see Vettel is just up the road there down this straight. So Vettel really has been hampered so, so much by that traffic. Meanwhile, for his teammate, he's out in the lead of this Grand Prix in clean air, followed by Sainz, Verline, then this train of Sergio Perez, Stoffel van Dorn, Mick Schumacher, and Max Verstappen, who are all out of sync of this Grand Prix. I don't think they're in this top fight, because behind them is Daniel Ricciardo lurking on the medium tyre. So I think all these guys are very much out of sync of this Grand Prix, and are going to fall behind Ricciardo eventually. But there goes van Dorn, down the inside of Sergio Perez there. So thankfully, he's, uh, he's getting up the order. And Mick Schumacher goes down the inside of Perez, and Barry is coming to the pits. Oh my god, what's gone on there? Oh, Schumacher's into the wall. It's a huge crash for Schumacher, and Perez has taken Schumacher out into the into the wall, into the pit lane. That is a very, very odd crash, but a very big one. Hopefully Mick's okay, but what an odd crash then. Now we move on to our POV, and you can see, as I was mentioning, we found ourselves right behind Vettel. Uh, the same for Grosjean as well. Me and Grosjean, uh, so, you know, very, very nose to tail there. So uh, I said, as I said the past half of the Grand Prix, me and Grosjean have bought, uh, both uh, caught uh, Vettel rapidly now, and we send it down the inside because I'm not wasting any time here. Vettel can faff around for like five laps just staying behind these guys, but I'm not playing like that. I'm playing hardball. I overtake Vettel immediately down the inside of Village there, and now we're going to get DRS 
Press on Valtteri Bottas in the Renault car and we're going to immediately try and look down the inside of the next corner to try and overtake him there. So down the inside, dive down the inside, get the grip, have the downforce, hit the apex, find the grip there and we're up the order into P11 now. Now can we try and feed it around the outside of carry? No, we're going to actually break a little bit and go down the inside now, get the grip, send it down the inside and now we're up into P10. So this is just an overtaking montage at the moment. Two positions gained, three positions gained. Now can we try and overtake the two Williams cars? So, so close to Lando Norris's rear end there. But around the outside of Cops, side by side, nearly banging tyres there. But the fellow Brits surely got to give up the position. A little bit of contact into Magnus and Beckett's, but I'm showing him who's boss there into Beckett's now. And now we'll get the run on Seta Camaro. So this has been an absolutely fantastic sequence of overtakes here. And can we finish it off in style? Overtake Seta Camaro on the left-hand side. DRS wide open, round the outside. Rich mix and into Stowe. We're going to get that position. And that's how you do it, Sebastian Vettel. That's how you do it. You may be a five-time world champion in the My Driver universe, but you couldn't overtake those five cars, and I've done it in one lap there. So there you go. But now we're going to look at the replay now, because we have to. This was an absolutely insane bit of action between Perez and Schumacher. Van Dorn overtakes Perez. He gets sent wide, and Perez is coming to the pits now. Schumacher is not. Schumacher is going to continue on, but Perez is on the outside and sends Schumacher into the wall. And unfortunately for us, we can't have a look at what actually happened next because the FIA refused to continue the camera on Schumacher's car. I don't know why. Maybe there was a uh, good reason to, but hopefully, as I said, Mick is okay there in that crash, but a very, very odd but violent crash there be between Perez and Schumacher. And so now focusing back on us, we're in P5 then. We've got Charles Leclerc coming to the pits now on the right-hand side there, so we're going to go up one more position. Effectively, we will be in a net first place, I think, with Grosjean in an effective net second because all the cars around us, you can see on the top left, uh, Verline, Van Dorn, Leclerc there, uh, Carrie, who was just behind us before, uh, they're all out of sync with this Grand Prix. So it's going to be me and Grosjean 1 2, and I believe then it may be Daniel Ricciardo in P3, a little bit out of sync with this Grand Prix. At the moment, he's in first, but I think he's also coming to the pits now with Van Dorn. So as we cross the line on lap 17, I think we will get into P1. There we go, up into P1. And so now we just take these soft tyres as long as we can. But meanwhile, away from us on the other side of the circuit, this is uh, we're a fight between a McLaren, Mercedes, and the two Audi cars. This is Carlos Sainz going down the inside of Sergio Perez. So the two Audis go side by side into the stove. Uh, Sainz is going to get Perez, but no, they're going to go side by side. Perez has got it back on the exit of the corner. A little bit of a lock up there potentially from Sainz and looks like Perez has defended successfully and actually now Sainz finds himself under pressure from the Mercedes car of Max Verstappen who's right up his gearbox followed by, I think this is Daniel Ricciardo and then Stoffel Van Dorn and so Verstappen has a little tiny look into turn one. Ricciardo and Van Dorn just sticking behind, basically just waiting for the opportunity potentially. Obviously they're going to get onto the back straight as they go through the village section and it looks like Perez is actually using that scrap to get away from Sainz quite a bit. Already about a second gap there between the two Audi cars but now let's go through the exit of this corner down the main welting uh, down the ma uh, back straight towards Lefield there is Verstappen going to get the speed yes he will sends it down the inside and Verstappen's going to squeeze Sainz out now this is more like it looks like Verstappen's finally woken up in this season we didn't see too much of it at Bahrain but the reigning world champion from 2019 has finally arisen in this season he's overtaken, uh, overtaken Sainz and he's up the order now he's pushing on now and now is Ricardo now going to get Sainz looks like Sainz is struggling now in this Grand Prix maybe for tyre wear as they go through Cops Ricardo right on the back of Sainz will he get him into Maggots I wonder no it's not going to be but he's going to stick behind Maggot and Beckett so excluding the two cars ahead of them Verstappen and Perez because I think they're out of sync of this Grand Prix I think these three are genuinely fighting for what would be around that podium position with me and Grosjean and potentially Sebastian Vettel. I mean, we haven't seen much of Vettel now since he got stuck behind that Renault train there, so we'll have to see where he is in all this a little bit later on, but Ricardo sends it down the inside of Stowe to overtake Science. That's a crucial overtake because I do think uh, Science and Ricardo are fighting over that podium position potentially. As Ricardo goes round the outside, the move's not done there, actually. Science has gone back oh, 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 with him and they got side by side through the final corner. Will Ricardo squeeze Science off? Yes, he will pushes him off circuit and Ricardo has got that move eventually they go three wide a little bit there into turn one as Van Dorn may have a look around the outside it's a poor camera angle that the FI have chosen and Van Dorn just about doesn't get in there but a great great little fight for what I think I think is around P3 maybe even the top flight I'm not 
too sure. It's very hard to tell because me and Grosjean are so out of uh, the loop of this entire fight because we're, we're, we're on the other side of the circuit. But now we move on to lap 19. We've taken these tyres as long as we can. Grosjean has already pit a lap earlier on lap 18. I've taken it one more lap to lap 19. So this is going to be uh, basically to see if the overcuts work for us. I extended my stint by one more lap. I could have easily pit on the same lap as Grosjean, but I felt like if I extended it one more lap, I could have gotten a nice seven lap stint at the end here on soft tyres, which would mean I could just go hammer and tong, just push as hard as I can on these last set of soft tyres to the end of the Grand Prix. So that's why I've extended it one more lap. And so now a good pit stop from us. Obviously no one's behind us to kind of stop us or kind of hold us up. So now we'll see where we come out. I honestly don't know where Grosjean is in all this. I don't even know where Ricardo, uh, Van Dorn and Sainz are in all this. So we'll have to see as we come out of the pits now. Where is Grosjean? Is he anywhere near? I saw a car going through turn one. It's going to be Grosjean. Look how close. This is fantastic stuff. Look how close it is on the exit of the pit lane side by side. So, so close. That's absolutely amazing stuff. And so Grosjean gets ahead, but we're going to have the grip. Do this switchback move down the inside. We're going to have DRS. You can see on the indicator on the bottom right. Squeeze Grosjean off, off track a little bit. Get the DRS wide open. Up the gears. Get the speed and we're going to cut ahead of him onto the racing line. But that is absolutely fantastic. Grosjean and myself, we we're so far apart in terms of the other side of the circuit after he made his pit stop and somehow we've come out literally neck and neck on the line out of the pit lane. That's absolutely crazy. That's awesome. That is absolutely awesome. So now we chase after, well, I'm not really too sure to be honest. We've got a lot of clean air and we've got a few cars ahead of us, but I'm not too sure who's pitting and who's not. We're in P7 now. We're catching Leclerc. I don't even know if Leclerc's going to pit or not. So Leclerc may be having a fantastic Grand Prix, the Grand Prix of his life at the moment, up in P6. I just don't know. I'm honestly so confused at the moment of what the tyre strategy is. But, uh, Either way, I'm going to try and catch Leclerc and overtake him. We're getting so much speed on him. Soft tyre versus his worn soft tyre, I imagine. So we get right up his gearbox now. He's going to uh, defend to the outside line. So I want to nip it down the inside. Get the grip. Lock up a little bit down the inside, though. And we're back up into P6 now. We've got Sergio Perez ahead of us. But I think on the mini-map, that is Perez coming into the pit. So as we cross the line onto lap 22, setting the fast up of the Grand Prix. So we are pushing flat out now into turn one of that 22 Perry's does go down the order so we're up into fifth place we see Van Dorn's on hard tyres up ahead so that suggests to me that Van Dorn is actually going to the end of this Grand Prix as well as maybe Ricardo and Sainz so actually in all of this I think these guys are all trying the two stop and they've jumped us they've actually jumped me and Grosjean who are doing the three stop Van Dorn goes down the inside of uh, Carlos Sainz for the second place in this Grand Prix so it's Daniel Ricardo who somehow in all of this was nowhere near first place for most of this Grand Prix is now come out in first, uh, Van Dorn's in second, Sainz has pit for a late pit stop, so Sainz trying the two stop has to convert very, very late on with four laps to go to a three stop, so we'll get up into third place, back onto the podium position, will Leclerc pit, where is Grosjean and all this, I think Leclerc's also pit potentially, so I think the running order is uh, Ricardo, Van Dorn, myself, and then Grosjean, and then so now we're looking back behind, we've got the two Red Bull cars, who are at the moment I think in the points actually, so both Red Bulls doing very, very well, and uh, one of them finds uh, uh, Pasco Verla right behind them and then you've got the Williams car then you've got Antonio Giovinazzi I think this is just ahead of Esteban Ocon I think or maybe Valtteri Bottas and then behind him is Max Verstappen so Bottas is doing an absolutely fantastic job at the moment but they go side by side Verstappen very aggressively down the inside to Maggots Bottas tries to come back at him but it's not going to be any use Verstappen trying to find his way fight his way back up the points but at the moment Bottas I think is on to get a points finish for Renault which would be absolutely amazing for Renault Meanwhile, behind them is the two Audi cars scrapping away outside the points. It's been a disastrous race for both Audi cars, actually. Uh, from what they had in qualifying, the pace just hasn't been there, for, especially for Carlos Sainz. But Sainz and them go side by side, and Schumacher overtakes one of the Williams cars, it looks like. But now we move on to lap 24. Two laps to go in this Grand Prix. We're chasing down Van Dorn, but Van Dorn is coming to the pits. That's him in the bottom right, on the, on the right-hand side as we lock up teammate into the pit so Van Dorn just like Sainz has made a very very late pit stop so it's a disaster for Stoffel Van Dorn I mentioned it earlier on the hard tyres were not the tyres to go on I don't know why Van Dorn and his side of the garage decide to go onto hard tyres because now he's out of his podium position and so now as we move on to the dying stage of this Grand Prix taking you through the running order it's Dan Ricciardo who leads the Grand Prix from myself in second place then Sebastian Vettel out of nowhere is coming home in third place it looks like with Pasco Verlein in fourth then you've got one of the Red Bull cars I think it's Pierre Gasly in 
in fifth place at the moment. Behind them then is Giovinazzi in sixth with uh, Verstappen now making the move for sixth place to overtake down the inside of Stowe. And then behind them looks like there's a bit of a scrap between the Renault and the Audi car. And it looks like Sainz is there in P8 with uh, Bottas just about hanging on to the last dying points for Renault. As I mentioned, that's going to be fantastic if Bottas can stay to the end. And that was Giovinazzi and Gasly making a late pit stop on the second last lap of the Grand Prix. So calamities for them. But it's going to be at the end of the day, the Australian in his new McLaren Honda to come across the line to win the British Grand Prix. We're going to come home in second place there. A noble effort, but somehow Ricardo's come out brilliantly with an absolutely worldly strategy out of nowhere. I mean, he, he was nowhere near the front order for most of this Grand Prix, but he's just been patient throughout the entire race and he's come back through for first place and that'll be his first win for the team. So here are the full race results then. Ricardo from myself, then Sebastian Vettel as I mentioned in P3, coming back quite beautifully actually because he was so far behind and caught up in that traffic that we saw earlier. To come back for a podium after that is a really great recovery. Obviously all round though, generally a pretty poor day for Ferrari after a great 1-2 lockout in qualifying. They once again just couldn't convert that pace and uh, seemingly ran into tyre issues, especially for Giovinazzi who pit on the second last lap of the Grand Prix from hard tyres. So Ferrari really need to sort it because they've got the pace actually. It looks like they do have the raw speed but their tyre issues are just hampering them at the moment. Then you can see it's Mercedes in fourth and fifth. So that is a uh, bravo. Great job from Monster Mercedes Racing because they were so poor in qualifying but like we saw in practice they showed some great long stint time so looks like the Mercedes car is probably one of those cars that picks up pace with heavier fuel potentially and is good on its tyres so a great finish with the two Mercedes boys they'll be happy to, to finally start kicking off their season a little bit with Carlos Sainz down in sixth place there with that late pit stop then you've got Roman Grosjean who struggled to the end on hard tyres poor poor choice for him on those last set of hard tyres so he finishes up behind Sainz in seventh place what could have been there for Grosjean and for Haas as a whole obviously with Nico Hulk with a failure, it could have been maybe even a double podium for, for Haas if they hadn't got that wrong and hadn't had the failure. Who knows? Who knows? And then in uh, the last points paying positions, we've got Valtteri Bottas for ninth place for Renault. I mean, a lot of people in the paddock and also you guys in the, in the the viewers were questioning the move from Renault and Bottas. Why is he there, Renault? Why is he chosen, Renault? There you go. Bottas wanted a new challenge, a fresh challenge, and that's why Renault wanted Bottas because Bottas has gotten Renault two points before Red Bull, before Monster Rehab, before Alfa Romeo. That is crazy. That is fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic, phenomenal stuff from Renault there to get points in the second Grand Prix of this season and then so finally it's going to be Stoffel van Dorn actually sorry that comes home in ninth. Bottas has got 8 so that's even better and then Sergio Perez with a light last points paying positions what a crazy Grand Prix. That was, that was so action-packed. So, so action-packed. And even the, the second half of the table, so, so many different changes. Obviously, very, very unlucky for Mick Schumacher, who obviously got crashed out earlier on in that Grand Prix, came back on hard tyres and then kind of fell back behind. Again, a pretty decent effort from Sophia Flourish in the Monster Rehab team. And I think there's going to be more to come from the Monster Rehab team. They've got unlucky twice now with tyres and their strategy. And also equally unlucky for Red Bull Racing because we saw Gasly in lofty heights of P5 at one point so again they've been hit with tyre trouble so all round all round some very lost potential in that Grand Prix and uh yeah, I think there's more to come from a lot of teams there, but what a hectic Grand Prix. Guys, if you have enjoyed that, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly form and content. I've been Arava, and I'll see you guys next time. Now on to the post-race interview questions. Goodbye. So another second place for you, Arav. Of course, you don't want to make it a habit, but it's not a bad place to be considering the major tire issues a lot of other drivers had in the dying stages of that race. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, we can't be we can't be uh, unhappy by second place. I think uh, Ricardo annoyingly just he just had way too much pace. I think <laughs> I think someone needs to slow him down at the end of that stint because I really thought I could have called him. I mean, we're on the we're on the bloody soft tires and he's on the mediums and somehow. Somehow he was just able to pull out the gap, and uh, I was chasing down Stoffel. I mean, I was catching uh, Stoffel, so I had the pace there in the car, but just he had just pulled out extra bit. So, yeah, just um, I think second place was probably the best we could get today. I'm um, speaking about Stoffel, and you mentioned uh, uh, tire issues. Yeah, I mean, a lot of drivers had a lot of tire issues. There was a lot, I think generally this weekend it was a very odd weekend. The hard tires were actually horrible to be on, and I said straight off the bat that we shouldn't be going on the hard tires. So I don't really know. Um, why Stoffel side of the garage decided to go on the hard at the end so that's maybe something you have to look at the debrief but um, yeah a lot of tyre issues I think 
from what we saw in Bahrain as well, I think that may be a kind of contention point of the entire season of who can really take the tyres a little bit longer. Or, you know, we've got a bit more downforce, faster V8 cars, you know, tyres haven't, haven't really changed too much. If anything, they've got a little bit softer, I think, in some areas, um, in some aspects. So I think the degradation is actually a little bit higher than last year. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's going to be a big issue. I mean, obviously, Stoffel, you know, from second to what was it in the end, I mean, out of the top five, I think. So... Yeah, it's really, really quite a shame because I thought we could have got a double podium, but I guess I maybe jinxed it um, in the last interview, maybe, uh, that we did last weekend. So, um, yeah, but yeah, I think definitely uh, drivers having to pit in the dying stages. Uh, already it's been twice now in two races, so I think that's going to be maybe a pattern we see. Um, but obviously, for, I'm not complaining too much. I mean, we, we did the job with a more aggressive strategy and it worked out for us for uh, the best place I think we could have gone. We saw you and Grosjean get very familiar with each other for quite a few laps there. Uh, it seemed very close, but fair. Uh, talk us through it if you can. Yeah, yeah, it was um, it was a really fun fight, really, really fun. Um, yeah, I think it was like it must have been like seven laps or something like that, straight, just fighting back and forth. And it was, um, yeah, I mean, already the second race, and we've had I have had such a good battle like that. So it's always enjoyable. And uh, props to Roman for uh, keeping it nice and clean, and yeah, we get each other the room. And uh, you know, that's what kind of we're here for. I mean, obviously, we want to all try and win, but ultimately as well, I want to enjoy my time in the in the sport, and uh, that's. Uh, you know exactly what we got today, so it was all really good. And uh, I was so surprised, actually, uh, how close it was in this in the last pit stop, uh, coming out side by side. Um, you know, especially it was so close that we didn't make contact because that's a very easy place to make contact. Because uh, obviously Roman would be coming out blind out of turn one up the crest, and to just be able to get so so close to my car, um, and we kept it all nice through the next corner. And then obviously I was able to get him in the bit of a switchback move. So yeah, that was uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun.